Hi, y'all. I'm going to talk a little bit about the military's efforts to incorporate women into all of the various fields, to include the combat arms fields, and how that's going. In particular, I'm going to talk about the Marine Corps because I just watched a little documentary on how it's going in the Marine Corps. Spoiler alert! Ain't going so great. Anyway, um, only like a hundred some odd women have made it into one of the combat arms, which, you know, good for them. Anyway, uh, so in the little documentary or the news piece I was watching, they were following, uh, talking to some women who were going through boot camp, and they were checking in periodically to see what their status was like, and uh, then reporting on whether or not the ones they talked to had passed or failed, and so surprisingly they failed. Uh, but anyway, they were talking about this, the one person they were focusing on in particular, and how she almost made it. She only missed uh, the qualification by uh, one or two reps and 22 seconds. And then the guy says, uh, I'm sorry, and he says that that is almost making it, almost doing the minimum, which, yeah, okay. This is an argument from a person who apparently doesn't understand what it means to be downrange from people who are trying to kill you while you're waiting on your ammunition uh, jockey to come by and give you more ammunition to put into your field artillery piece to keep shooting, or whatever the hell they shoot, uh, to keep putting uh, rounds down range. And, moreover, who apparently lacks the upper body strength to get the ammunition up to where you might be. So, uh, yeah, she was only off by one or two, but that's the difference between alive and dead. She was half a minute late. A half a minute is a, is a lifetime in war. Now, when I was in the Army, it was drilled into our heads time and time and time again. There are two types of people on a battlefield, the quick and the dead. And so if you're not going to be the quick, you're definitely going to be the dead, or you're almost definitely going to be the dead. Everywhere you go, it needs to be moving out with a purpose. Uh, you need to get from here to there quickly. Because, you know, the slower you move, the easier, are, easier you are to shoot. So anyway, the, um, one of the, the great fears about women in combat arms is about their inability to meet the standards. And I share this. I mean, it's a sincere, uh, it's a legitimate concern. Uh, but my view on it is this. Whatever is true of the average woman is irrelevant. We're not recruiting the average person to be an infantryman. We're recruiting uh, athletes to be the, an infantryman. So while it's true that on average men are much stronger than women on average are, it's false. Uh, it, it, it's not, it does not from that follow that you can say um, no woman can do as well as any of the men who qualify, and indeed some of them apparently uh, can, at least at the minimum standard. How they'll hold up in combat, I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait to see. Now, they'll, they'll argue that, um, well, as I mentioned, the, the average, which isn't... The, the reason that we send people to basic training, send them to boot camp and train them and then test them, is so that can be a sieve where you sort out the people who can't make it from the people who can make it, and you get rid of the people who can't, and you keep the ones uh, who can't, who can make it. I'm all in favor of that, and I don't think there should be any restrictions. Anyone who can do what needs to be done in that, that job, uh, you know, if there's a slot available, should be able to go get it. But the fear is that um, if you say we'll do this, what's going to happen is you're going to notice a lot of women fail. And then people are going to feel bad for them and say, boo -hoo, let's lower their standards so we can get in these incompetent women. And I share that concern. And uh, the, the, well, it, it happens a lot. So anyway, the former commander of the female group at the Marine Corps Recruit Depot um, was relieved of duty for cause. Now, when she took over command, uh, the women were had a for, uh, initial qualification rate of under 70 percent. So 65 to 70 percent of them um, would pass in the initial uh, go-round and the rest of them, the rest of the women, would fail, whereas it was in like around 90-ish percent, percent for the men. Uh, varied from term to term, you know, low 80s, low, uh, I'm sorry, high 80s, low 90s. And within a year of tweaking how the training was done, uh, very minor tweaks by the way, she managed to raise the initial qualification, the first time qualification rate in the females, to about 91, 92 percent, which is good work, uh, very good work on her part. The, the problem is, is that it required work, that there is a standard that needs to be met at every little guidepost along the way. And you need to meet each of these along the way in order to uh, be able to do this as well as you should be able to do it on uh, qualification day. The interesting thing about what she did, or I, what I should say is the interesting thing about uh, what happened is what she didn't do. The women didn't get any extra training. They didn't get any extra time on the range. 
they got uh, all, the same amount of time that the men got, but they didn't accept any excuses. No excuses, whatever. Here's a standard, you either meet it or you go home. So she was relieved of duty for cause because uh, she was found to have a, quote, hostile, unprofessional, and abusive, uh, end quote, command climate. This is uh, about Lieutenant Colonel Kate Germano. Uh, Germano displayed toxic leadership, toxic leadership. You can hear the social justice warrior in there just writing this. Uh, by publicly berating and showing contempt for subordinates, bullying Marines. Yes, apparently the United States Marines are getting bullied. Who knew? All right, devil dog. I'm sorry, devil puppy. I'm sorry, demon puppy. Um, and singling them out for underperformance. Uh, let me just pause here and talk a little bit about the Army, since I know it and not the Marine Corps. Apparently the Marine Corps does things differently than the Army. But in the Army, uh, when you go to basic training, there are several phases. The first couple of weeks are called total control, which is just like it sounds. You need permission to do anything. Uh, you are not at liberty to decide when you need to go to the restroom. Someone will tell you when you may go to the restroom, to the latrine. Uh, every minute of your day is uh, scrutinized by the cadre, by the drill sergeants, whatnot. And they monitor everything that you do, everywhere you go, uh, when you speak, when you don't. I mean, they monitor all of it. It, it is just total control. It, during the total control phase, there's also, that's the uh, mass punishment phase, which persists longer than the total control phase. If, if the uh, company has done really well in uh, the first two or three weeks, they relax total control and they'll grant you a couple of minor privileges. And then if you do well having those granted to you, uh, you'll get a few more as the time goes on. And uh, so this is a bit of a carrot and a stick. You get all stick the first two weeks. It's nothing but stick. And then you get a little bit of carrot. But you screw up, the carrot's taken away, and you get all stick again. And mass punishment could, could range from just a team, maybe a person and his battle, a soldier and his battle buddy. It could be the entire squad. It could be the entire platoon. Or it could be uh, the entire company. So if one person makes a mistake, everybody pays for that mistake. Now, the whole point of basic training is to take people who are civilians and who don't understand the rigors of war, who are going to be put in the hands of people who presumably do understand the rigors of war, or at least the hardships of the military life, because they've served, they've done at least that if they've not been in a combat zone. And the first thing that you have to do is psychologically destroy them. You have to break them, just like breaking a horse. You have to just run them ragged until they cannot move, until their muscles are so tired they lack the strength to pick themselves up. And you have to do this uh, you know, hour after hour after hour for weeks to break down those psych psychological barriers. Um, it is rigorous, and it's supposed to be. But then the mass punishment phase goes away. And when you screw up, the only person who gets punished is you. You are singled out uh, to be punished for the mistake that you made, rather than everyone else having to join you. And indeed, we had a drill sergeant who got a, uh, a reprimand an official reprimand, because after the, the company commander had said no more mass punishment, we're now at the individual punishment phase, he decided to smoke the entire company for about an hour and a half on a weekend because some people were talking on the phones, not standing at parade rest while talking to their parents. So he smoked he smoked us all. I mean, ugh, pile of sweat on the floor, like, help! I'm man down! I had fallen and I couldn't get up. And uh, so he got relieved for cause. He violated the order that no longer will there be mass punishment. You must, uh, you can only pick on the people who do the things wrong. And your punishment was not done privately. You were punished right there for God and everybody to watch it. As an example, apparently in the Marine Corps, you've got to use kid uh, fancy white gloves when you deal with uh, the women, at least. I don't know if, they, if this holds true for the men. God, I certainly hope it doesn't. And I certainly hope that the climate like this where they're coddling the women will go away uh, very quickly. So, um, how is it that she did all of these things? Well, let's, let's look at some of the, uh, the things that she did. Germano also, quote, reinforced gender bias and stereotypes, end quote, in the minds of her Marines by telling them on several occasions that male Marines would not take orders from them and would see them as inferior if they could not meet men's physical standards, the investigation found. Well, I don't know about taking the orders from them. Soldiers, Marine soldiers follow orders from their superiors, whether they like their superiors or they don't like their superiors. But uh, this colonel is damn straight when she says the men will not respect the women who cannot do what they can do. Uh, respect for men is not handed to them by dint of their existing. They 
earn it by the doing of things. Sorry, we have a cat staying with us, and apparently it's not particularly happy to be here. Shut up! That worked. So anyway, the colonel is absolutely correct that the men will not respect their female uh, colleagues when their female colleagues uh, are performing in an inferior fashion to what the, the men are able to do. This is perfectly true. Now, there are two types of respect in the military. Uh, whether you like the person who holds a given rank uh, is one issue, but then there's the respect for the rank that is a different issue. You are legally obligated to pay the rank a certain degree of respect, otherwise you can go to prison. That does not mean you have to like your commander, you don't have to like your leadership, you don't have to personally respect them, but whatever contempt you hold for them uh, personally, individually, you have to you know, just keep that inside uh, because of, of their rank and position and the way that the law is written. This is not a problem for soldiers. It happens day in, day out, all throughout services around the world. You will have leaders who suck, and the soldiers don't like them, uh, but nevertheless, they do their job, they follow the orders, and they render the proper customs and courtesies that are the traditions of the service in which they serve. That's a professional uh, fighting force right there. But as far as earning the respect of uh, your fellows by physical prowess or uh, you know, technical, technical um, competence in your field, she, she's dead on. Uh, just You're not going to get that. Every time you run across a woman in the military, if you're a man in the military, and she has any rank on her at all, even if she doesn't have any rank on her at all, in the back of your mind, it's always lurking. Which type is she? The competent type? Or the I need to be babied type? And I hate to say it, but it's true. The latter dramatically outweigh the former. That said, I've talked about this sergeant major I had many times because uh, I had a tremendous amount of respect for her. For her. Uh, one, for her rank, because she had it and I was legally obligated to do that. But two, Personally, I respected her very greatly. Um, she was not one of these, well, what's the least I have to do to get through type people? She'd look at the, the PT scale. She's like, all right, here's the maximum for the females. That doesn't look particularly challenging. I need something. Ah, here's the maximum score for the men. I'm going to do more than the maximum for on, on the male scale on every PT test for my entire career. And she did. She did more than the maximum number of push-ups, more than the maximum number of sit-ups, and uh, she beat the, uh, the maximum runtime that counted for points by a, a, a comfortable margin. She's also the one who selected me to be the, uh, the driver for an incoming sergeant major after she changed uh, PCS to a different uh, station. And the one thing that was, uh, ma made her a little bit iffy about me, it wasn't my professionalism or anything like that, my uniform was always squared away, high grades, you know, whatever, all that good stuff. It was just the fact I wasn't a, a good runner. I've never been like, you know, oh, I can't make it from here to there type, but I'm not the fastest runner uh, who's ever walked the face of the earth. Well, she decided to take me under her wing and be very helpful and cancel all of my weekends for uh, a little bit of time to teach me how to run and how to run well and how to run fast. And the greatest mistake that you could ever make in, that, in a unit under her uh, command was to complain about the, the difficulty of doing something because either one, you're a woman, or two, you're short. She was like 5'3", and I have seen her snatch a Sinkgar's radio off of a female private. It, for those of you who don't know, Sinkgar's radio is a, it's the frequency hopping communications radio. They're pretty heavy. Uh, and take away uh, the, the pig, the, M, the M62, from uh, one of the male soldiers and do both of their jobs. You know, I, I will take, uh, you know, I'll be the gunner and I'll be the radio man. Now, you privates, come here and follow along and pay attention. This is what it looks like. And she's out there doing her three to five second rush. You know, she's like 42, 43, 44 years old. You know, she's had a, a long, hard life in the military. And she's just boom, 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 boom. And she comes back. She says, now what's going to happen is all the training is going to stop for the next few minutes while I smoke you in front of everybody for complaining, uh, for making people question my competence because of your whiny nature. She did not tolerate that shit from any of the females in her unit. And she did not tolerate it from any of the short people in her unit. Uh, there is a standard that needs to be met, and she was uncompromising in making sure that you met it. If you did not meet it, uh, you had an opportunity to be retrained, and if you still did not meet it, she would recommend you be uh, discharged from the service. You'd be administratively separated from the service for uh, want of giving that spot to someone who's actually competent. So too do I get the feeling that this is what this colonel is like. Her job was to see that there's a standard, and women were failing to meet it. And the only way 
to force people to meet the standard is to be hard on them when they are not doing what it is they need to be doing in order to meet that standard. And this colonel sounds to me like a person who wanted to make sure that warriors, people who are uh, ostensibly going into war zones to fight, are not going to get themselves and their friends killed because they're, they're too weak, too whiny, and too useless. And so she brought the hammer down, and the exact fears of people on the, a lot of people on the right playing itself out again. Because someone is trying to force women to meet the same standards as the men, that person needs to be disappeared. So of course the women don't have to ask for a lower standard. Wink. All they have to do is complain and get the people who insist on their meeting the standard fired. It works just the same. Have a great day.